Good morning, lovely people. Um, yes, uh, I hope you're... Uh, how are you doing on this wonderful spring day? Uh, suddenly from snowing yesterday, it's, uh, it's a proper spring day. It felt fantastic sitting outside this morning. Um, <clears throat> yeah, welcome. Welcome to your Yoga Solutions Live with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. And uh, I have some questions this week, again. Uh, it's been a bit of a flurry this morning. I'll turn up a bit late, so uh, just let me, let me get myself a bit of tea. I have this tea every day now. It started back in um, when COVID started. I just had this uh, body intuition that what I needed was um, ginger and turmeric. And um, so I made a ginger turmeric and, and lime or lemon tea. and. Um, I've got hooked on it. I have to have it every day now. So, <laughs> uh, okay, let me find the questions. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, so I've got two questions. Got another one from Dorothy. Um, Dorothy says, I'm continuing with my practice regarding back arch. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dorothy comes to me sometimes and. Um, and uh, yes, she's she's trying to conquer the issues of back of back bending. Um, uh, yeah, continuing to practice uh, regarding back arch. Interested in how to prepare the soles of the feet when going up into the pose so they remain on the ground. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so the heels come up so that she she can come up. And then it's um, then uh, at the moment I feel like I'm going onto my toes and then have to adjust my feet. Should you say more? Um, it's becoming a lot easier to come up in, into back arch. That's good. And I notice that your feet stay in the same place while going up in the pose and during the pose. Thanks, uh, Mark Wolford. I, um, that's uh, Dorothy. That's my old name. Wolford is my old name. It's. Um, um, uh, I'm not being I'm not being sort of weird about it, but uh, I changed my name to my father's natural name, which is Aquaviva. Uh, my natural father's name, that's Aquaviva, and with it came a sort of change of relationship to the world. Uh, you see, Mark, Mark Wolford had to um, prove himself to the world a bit too much, and Mark Aquaviva kind of gets some of his value so he, he's a bit more chilled so i, I prefer mark aquaviva and I, I know many people know me as mark wolford but i feel like i've moved on into a new version of myself so uh please um refer to me as mark aquaviva so uh yes um, she notices my feet stay on the ground <clears throat> she wants to understand how that happens um, okay, and the other question is from DL, who's done um, a few of my courses. Uh, very dedicated teacher. Uh, she says, I, I would be curious sometime for your perspective on feeling and working with the sit bone relationship to the leg and the lower back. Sit bone relationship to the leg and lower back. It's quite well put, actually. Um, and I've been playing around with that. Thanks, Mark. Okay, Dion and Dorothy. So sit bones, legs, and coming up into arch without having to come off your heels. Um, okay. So uh, I, I've had just had a big breakfast. So I don't know how good my own back bending will be, but um, doesn't really matter. It's, it's about um, creating the conditions to move it in a useful direction. And it's both, both questions are the leg end of things. Um, so I, li I like to uh, I like to illustrate what the issue is in the first place. So Dorothy's question is around. She, she's worked out how to how to come up being on her toes, uh, and, and then and then she puts the heels down afterwards, and. Uh, there's nothing actually wrong with that, except uh, her, well, it's, it's not even except. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a way of coming up, um, and there's nothing wrong even if you didn't get the heels down at all. It doesn't matter. It, it's a, the the postures are about finding ways of supporting yourself freely in movement, but 
that being said, uh, the heels coming off, uh, having to be off the ground for her to come up, um, shows a restriction. Because essentially what's happening is the heels come off the ground so that she can take her weight over her feet and then, then use the feet to come up, um, which is okay. <laughs> but uh, she noticed that I don't do that. Uh, I leave my feet on the ground. And um, is there any advantage to that? Well, I noticed when I was trying to, uh, when I was trying to come up, I, I wasn't trying to come up because I haven't done any preparation, but um, when I was trying to exploring the movement of, you know, why the heels stay off the ground, it's simply uh, so the knees can travel. So uh, the perfunctory thing of how do I come up um, that's a simple solution. You, you, if if you leave the heels on the ground, the knees can't travel as far. So, <laughs> so it makes it harder to push up, and that's the key. Um, if you leave the heels off the ground, you can push up quite easily, because because you can um, move your weight over your feet far enough uh, to to push yourself into position. The version that I do is not about pushing myself up. The version I do is about um, being able to kind of get a sense of releasing the spine away from the ground because I have contact with the ground. And, and that's an entirely different perspective on the posture, on achieving the posture. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I, I practice with wheel and I don't come up at all, <laughs> not because um, I failed, but because uh, I'm not in the place where the spine is free enough to take me there. And I'm talking about the thoracic spine. You know, do, doing that thing where you slide your weight over your feet and then try and put, and when the weight is on the feet, you try and push them down. That's how you would stand up, actually. Um, but, uh, but doing that is about achieving coming up. And um, what was I going to say? Yes, and, and you don't really need to have a compliant thoracic spine for that to happen because uh, you can hang back on the ground as you move towards your feet from your lower back and it's not a, not a big deal because the heels are not on the ground. You know, um, that, that, that's the, that's the um, key because if, if you're pushing up, uh, pushing with the heels on the ground would push against your back and that's what most people do anyway and it it pushing against the back is the it, the lower back to cause it to fold from there is the thing that means the the upper body is heavy because the the, um, the movement of extension needs to be centered in the thoracic spine reversing so so it's not from lifting, pushing against your back that you extend. It can be, that's how most people extend. But the, the, the yoga of it, as in when you're not creating any violence to the spine, is that it's the thoracic spine that brings you up by reversing its curve so that the other secondary curves can remain in, a, in their sort of more neutral extension state rather than doing the extension. Um, <clears throat> it's all a bit technical, but uh, and you, you kind of need to understand the curves of the spine to know what I'm talking about. But uh, that that that's that's my uh, intention when I'm trying to do wheel is I I'm, I don't care whether I achieve the posture or not. What I care about is that the movement of the movement of it, uh, of extension, the movement of opening up the spine in that way, is sourced in the spine behind the heart, and um, Traveling over your feet in that way, I don't know if you can see, uh, traveling over your feet in that way will simply allow you to have the curves of the, the lumbar curve and the um, at the center of that extension movement without too much problem because you're not pushing your heels down. You see, and that's why it's a true, that's why it's difficult to get, to get the heels down um, uh, when, when you get up there as well. You have to adjust when you get up there. 
Uh, it's all okay, except you've moved into the position by bending from the lumbar spine. And the thoracic spine will still be uh, flexed. It will still be a rounded part of your back, uh, which won't be joining in with the movement. So the lumbar spine will have to do too much. If you're comfortable with that, then that's okay. But if you repeat that, what you're doing is you're continuing to... Um, if you repeat the preference of moving in that way, what you're doing, what you're doing is you're continuing to um, exaggerate the curvatures of the spine, which is a shortening. If you think about it, you know um, the the thoracic spine doesn't extend as much as it could. The lumbar spine is do is extending more, so the thoracic spine gets better at being rounded and the lumbar curve gets better at being arched so you end up shortening um, and uh, you know uh, one of the Scarabelli imperatives is we're trying to um, awaken the spine and I, I believe the spine that uh, Vanda's talking about is this locked part that most people experience uh, that most people experience as locked the, the part between the bump of the base of the neck and be behind the heart. In fact, um, one of my um, partner's tutors on a, on a course she's doing at the moment um, said in an anatomy class that the thoracic spine doesn't move. It's not meant for movement. And uh, so obviously based on um, personal experience and maybe maybe that's considered as normal in, in the medical world, I don't know. But uh, that, that idea is... Um, well, it's not incorrect. For some people, the thoracic spine doesn't move at all. And you can live a, a, a whole life very well without moving your thoracic spine. But look at any child's spine. All of their extension comes from opening the heart. And uh, that's what we're trying to, uh, for, for me, that's one of the objects. That's one of the sort of holy grails, if you like, uh, one, one of the measures of through the spine because when, when you can extend from the upper spine you, you get a chance to be vertical without having to hold yourself up so um yeah uh, to do with the movements of breathing so anyway that's that's what the problem is um and it's what makes it difficult to leave the feet on the ground now dl's question around the relationship between the sit bones the legs and the lower back it's kind of the same question in some ways, because, um, and you can you can try this with me if you like. If you uh, begin with a nice relationship to the ground through your head, shoulders, and pelvis, a little embrace of the earth um, to breathe will help the breath arrive in the back of you and allow you to breathe wholeheartedly without puffing up too much. And then uh, that same engagement with the earth as you release the breath will help you find your center. And that, that's just a starting point. It's a way of moving from within. We can explore these relationships. Um, so uh, starting with the fronts of the feet on the ground. And uh, I, I often encourage that because it's the fronts of the feet that are your kind of proprioceptive relationship to support uh, th through the feet to the world in that it's the fronts of the feet that do the automatic balancing uh, they need to be responsive without that you don't actually have a relationship you know, you're trying to be heavy on your feet so starting on the fronts of the feet and the, and that that thing that allows you to move easily which is the knees traveling away from you it's an easy thing because you've got no restrictions for the spine and because you're not pushing the ground away with the heels, you're not pushing against your back. And that's the problem that most people encounter, is they think the feet are the heels, so they push down against the heels, which pushes up against their backs, their lower back. So if you start on the fronts of the feet and wake up the toes so that you can kind of thread through the contact and out into space through your toes, um, if you want to support back through yourself, or if you want to move, the knees can simply roll over 
the feet in, in the direction of the toes. And between those things, you can relax your back. So there's no tension around the buttocks, there's no tension around the base of the spine. So for DL, there's one relationship that is interesting that you need to note. The fronts of the feet um, can allow you to relax your back, pushing down and uh, to find support through the fronts of the feet can allow you to relax your lower back. To, to compare, push down through the heels and notice how tense the lower back gets. Okay, so the, the, spine want, the back of the spine wants to find and relate to the fronts of the feet. Okay, so there, there's a relationship that's useful. And if you play with that feeling of the base of the spine, find, finding a relaxed relationship to the feet, and it's not the pelvis that picks that up, it's the knees traveling away with the release of the breath. And you'll feel, you'll be able to feel that relaxation. The test is when you breathe, if you breathe by lifting, that's your back being tense. So the test is can you remain relaxed in your back as you breathe? And the way you notice that is a feeling of the breath across the base of the spine. So there's a definitive dropping sensation from within that allows the the spine at the back to feel cushioned by the arriving breath. And then the release of the breath can empty your weight away from the legs onto the upper body. So you get a, a relaxed spine version of bridge, I suppose, provided the knees are traveling over the feet. Now, the question of getting the heels down um, well, most people get the heels down by not by, by letting go of the ground with the fronts of the feet. So it's, it's literally lifting the fronts of the feet off the ground to get the heels down. So you've, you've sacrificed a layer of support. What we need to do is to find that relaxed spine relationship to the fronts of the feet and then use the touch of the feet actively to support through our bones and um, if you do that from the inside of the foot from the weight going in and the down going through the ball of the feet balls of the feet you can use that purchase to kind of radiate out into space either side of you so i don't mean just waving the legs around i mean using the touch as if you're trying to widen the mat between the feet um, it's an artificial movement until you realize that what that does, the movement as a whole, starts to send forces of support back through the bones, back into your pelvis as you engage with it. And if you do it with the release of the breath, you'll, you'll feel the muscles of the outside of the pelvis getting involved with that as you release the breath. And that sort of radiating action means that you remain supported by the feet as the base of the spine travels with the knees over the feet. But within that movement, the base of the spine is coming up enough for the heels to go down. And it's not about dropping your weight through the heels, it's about touching the ground with the heels as well. So the action, uh, the, the fronts of the feet are still kind of taking your weight. And the fronts of the feet are still responding to the contact. But as you get a bit more active in how the feet work and the thighs will join in, in supporting back through your pelvis as the spine uh, uh, allows the heels to drop away from them and in the, in the process at some point provided you don't let go of the ground in the fronts of the feet well if you do then that just that happens and you're no longer supported but if at some point within that circuit the heels make fleshy contact with the ground so you're still using the fronts of the feet but 
you're also touching the ground with the heels. Now, Gail's question about the sit bones. Uh, if, if you're following me, your legs might get tired and you might need to sort of open them out a bit so you can start again. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the sit bones. If you think about the, the pelvis inside of this, okay? Now, what most people do is they do stuff to the pelvis where they use the muscles around the sit bones to pull the pelvis up. Um, it, that's the normal thing. And I'm trying to get you to let go of that and get supported by the feet instead. So the knees travel away and the, pel the spine and pelvis can follow. But those same muscles or similar muscles and a few deeper rotator muscles get involved when you do the radiating out. So from the inner foot widening, radiating out to feed back through the pelvis. And you'll find some effort around the outside of the pelvis, but also directly up into the sit bones. When you're doing it locally, the sit bones, the, the muscles around here simply contract and lift, and uh, that pulls on the spine. But when you're um, relating what you're doing to support and the action of the feet, then what happens is those muscles get involved with pushing up directly from underneath the sit bones, like it, like uh, a seat would, if you're sitting, if you're sitting well on the ground or something, how the ground would push up through your sit bones. So you get upward support through you from the feet, and the the local muscles will be pushing vertically up. When I say vertically, I mean um, through your body directly because of the thigh bones working round into the pelvis so you get supported from the side by the radiating action but part of the the local response around the pelvis will be causing a directly up through you feeling you know to push you this direction at the sit bones away from the legs so i'm exaggerating but so you can see how that goes you know so it's not about lifting the pelvis which uses those muscles it's about the muscles responding to support you in the, in, the, in the appropriate direction. So all of this is based on understanding that support is meant to travel through your structure, not um, uh, support isn't when you support your structure. Support is when the forces that you're engaging with, that you're creating, that are engaging with touch, travel through the structure so that the structure is supported. So you use your structure for support. Um, so, once again, have a breath, let it go. And as you release the breath to release the weight towards your shoulders, you can allow the knees to travel over the fronts of the feet. If you're touching the ground on the fronts of the feet, you can use those feet to feed back through those thigh bones in a spiraling kind of way to get lateral support. And meanwhile, some of the action underneath the sit bones that you would normally use to lift your pelvis is causing the sit bones to come together and up through you as the spine continues to relax but travel with the knees towards the feet. So you get this two directional movement of the pelvis being sent up through you whilst the spine is communicating away from you and to the knees. And then when, when the heels get to touch the ground from that spine, then you've got a relationship that supports you. And all of those relations, two, the two directional relationship, the feet going down, the pelvis coming up, the core coming up, the weight going down, all of those relationships allow you to be on the whole footprint in a way that doesn't rely on the lumbar spine. And then if you can find good relationships, which is another class, I think, good relationships to the hands that allows the rib cage to respond so that the thoracic spine can move, then the thoracic spine gets to release with the breath towards the chest. 
the thoracic spine gets to release with the release of the breath towards the chest as the chest drops. So the upper spine is doing a similar thing within the rib cage that the sacrum is doing within the pelvis. There's an inside out thing that happens. And the thoracic spine does that because of the way, if you can work it out, because of the way you use your arms, which is not dissimilar. When you've got all of that going on, you have a relationship to the ground that allows you to land on your hands and feet to breathe. So you don't puff up and fill up too much. It's the back of you that gets supported. And then with the release of the breath, if it communicates to the feet, if it communicates to the hands, communicating to the feet leaves the sp lumbar spine relaxed. Communicating to the hands invites the thoracic spine to reverse. And you simply follow that by pressing down through the hands. There you go. <laughs> so very, really quite uh, involved um, understanding of all those things, but I managed it before 11 o'clock. Quite, quite pleased with myself for that. Proper masterclass for people that um, already have quite a good understanding of the body. Moreover, of its... Um, of the structure, the, the, the skeleton, the, the bones, the joints, uh, people that, I, I don't mean people that know about it. I mean, people that can, that have a quiet enough practice to be able to sense these things, even if they're working hard. Um, so, so, uh, you know, hopefully the ideas make sense so that you can point your attention to appropriate things as you're working, because when you're working, you'll be not noticing some tensions that you always feel, and but noticing efforts that you're not used to feeling. You, it's very hard to stay on point and understand what you're doing. You see, so um, hopefully it makes sense uh, to you, uh, but really it only makes sense if you if you if you experience it. So. Uh, if uh, if that was of value to you, I'm I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, if you think it's of interest to people, then do feel free to share it around the uh, Facebook um, until I I take it off to uh, leave it on the Aquaviva website for my premium members. Um, and uh, yes, I, I I hope it hope you find value and I hope others find value in it. So uh, that being said. Um, what, what have I got going on? Uh, Saturday week, I'm doing one of my uh, legendary Saturday morning retreats. I, I love them. Um, they've become a bit of a bi-monthly event for people that like to work with me. And um, so come along. I, I think it's up on the website. Places go fast. That's what I left it for two weeks so that um, uh, everyone can get a place in time, um, and that's yeah Saturday Saturday week, uh, ten thirty to one, a couple of hours of two and a half hours of gentle flow with a little break in the middle. And uh, I always like to I, I sometimes have a theme going on, but um, I like to check in with everyone so that uh, everyone's needs are met during the workshops. Other than that, I've got my regular classes. I've got one in uh, half an hour or so. I do an intermediate one on Monday evenings, um, and I have a, another all, all levels one tomorrow at 11 a.m. And you can always book a, if you've got something specific going on and you want to find some direct solutions for yourself, uh, you can you can book for free, for a 15 minute free consultation. I'll, I'll give you the lowdown on, on what I think will help you. And if you want some direct guidance, you can work with me one-to-one -one and uh, book a session. Other, other than that, I'm quite happy to just give you the information. You will go away and play with it and uh, to see if you can work it out for yourself. Okay. So uh, that's about it. 
Uh, I've been Mark Jack Reviva. Uh, this has been your Yoga Solutions Live. I shall see you at the same time, same place next week. Much love to you all. Bye now.